fans filing in for this, the 100th postseason game in the history of Venerable Dodger Stadium, home to this team since 1962. 80 degrees as game time approaches. And this NLDS presentation is brought to you by Booking.com. Up in the booth with Ron Darling, I'm Bob Costas. And what the Phillies just did to the Braves points up something we've been talking about the last few days. For an excellent team, a team that's been strong throughout the regular season, or in the case of the Braves and the Dodgers, for several seasons now, the division series is the most perilous. Well, it's it's treacherous in the iteration that it is now. When you watch a team win their division, you think it should give them more mm -hmm. safety or safety net, but it does not. Uh, but the Dodgers all season long have been very resilient. Uh, they've made a lot of different changes because they didn't get a, a lot of pitching from veterans, mostly from young kids, uh, but they still have that Betts and Freeman duo. But they have to have a bad taste in their mouth from last year losing to the Padres, who they had beat by 22 games in the National League West. And this year, they finished 16 games ahead of the 84-win Diamondbacks in the same division. But again, right away, they have to face a divisional foe that they outdistanced by plenty, just as the Braves beat the Phillies by 14 a year ago and 14 again this year, lost to them in the division series in 22, now down to them 1-0 in 23. But they have Clayton Kershaw, and when he pitches against the Arizona Diamondbacks, at Dodger Stadium, it is win day, as you can see by the numbers. Now, despite their modest win total of 84, the Diamondbacks are not without star power, and it begins with the cinch rookie of the year in the National League, Corbin Carroll. Boy, he's been fun to watch all season long. Maybe the greatest rookie season in franchise history for the Diamondbacks, and his fingerprints were all over that wild card series. His ability to hit, his ability to hit for power, the speed that he's exhibited all season long, got the first postseason victory in a series for the Diamondbacks since 2007. And this is Hollywood, right, Bob? Yeah. The road to perdition is what it must feel like for Merrill Kelly every time he faces the Dodgers. 0-11 for his career. 0-5 with the ERA over 7. But he can do one thing tonight. He can erase all of that in one start here in Game 1. Well, the Diamondbacks are, in essence, playing with house money. The Dodgers can only lose here. If they win the series, they just checked the box. They were expected to check and moved on to the LCS. Back with the first pitch after this. by Geico. Insurance made easy. And throughout this series, beginning here in Los Angeles and moving eventually to Arizona, we'll be joined on the field by Lauren Shahadi. Lauren, you got it. Yeah, hi, Bob. Clayton Kershaw just joking around. This is really cutting into my college football Saturday. I <laughs> asked him, how have you been able to be so consistent for such a long time? He said, look, adapt or die. I'm not overpowering guys anymore. I need swing and miss on my slider. When it looks like it's coming out of the same tunnel as my fastball, that's where the magic lies. He said, some guys, think about this, never get a taste of October. It's not lost on me that I've been able to do this 32 times. Bobby Miller, Game 2 starter, told me yesterday, I've wanted to be Clayton Kershaw for most of my life. And I think, Bob and Ron, there's an entire generation of kids and adults really do feel that very same way. Thanks, Lauren. Clayton Kershaw at age 35 in his 16th big league season. Certain Hall of Famer could be near unanimous, if not unanimous. Three-time Cy Young Award winner. And in 2014, he doubled up and added the MVP as well. In every possible way to measure greatness, he's at or near the top. Career winning percentage. Walks and hits to innings pitched. Career ERA. If there is one relative demerit, it comes in the postseason because October has not been as kind to him as April through September. 13 and 12 in the postseason in 31 starts. So really a full season for Kershaw, but it doesn't get past. His 2.48 ERA is the lowest in the live ball era. So that's since 1920. He's done it all that you can do. Here's the Diamondbacks lineup. They were minus 15 in terms of runs scored and runs allowed. But they put it together toward the end of the season well enough to sneak into the playoffs. And their approach is, look, we're going to get guys on base. We're going to steal bases. They swiped 166. Only the Reds with 190 had more. They lead the majors in sacrifice bunts. They take the extra base. Torrey Lovello's team is resourceful. Torrey Lovello told us before the game, we embrace the uncommon. 
They try to win on the margins, whatever it takes. Sometimes they'll steal bases, sacrifice bunt, and sometimes they'll have enough slug in their lineup to hit some home runs. See the defense uh, for the Dodgers. Betts is in second base. That, uh, that allows three left-handed hitting outfielders in Hayward, Outman, and Peralta. That has been a key all season. His ability, six-time Gold Glove right fielder, ability to play second base and sometimes shortstop to get those left-handed bats in the lineup. Vic Carapaza is the plate umpire. There you see the rest of the crew. Todd Tichner, who has second base tonight, is the crew chief. Switch hitter Cattel Marte steps in. Hit 276 for the season. As befits an ace, this is the 12th time Clayton Kershaw has started game one of a postseason series, be it division series, LCS, or World Series. Off speed pitch, laced in the left center field. Outman on the run, misjudged it, and it pops out of his glove. And here's Marte sprinting for second and diving in. Well, Bob Outman, who has been outstanding in center field all season long, he's got to have the jitters also, right? First batter up in his first postseason and juggles this ball, not able to hold on to it. On Hit the, the second heel of pitch his of the glove. game, right up the heel, bounces out, tries to regroup and catch it with his bare hand, but could not. Not to start Kershaw is looking for. And it brings up Corbin Carroll. Foul to the seats. Carroll is four for seven with two home runs against Clayton Kershaw. And he went four for seven with a homer in the two game sweep of the Brewers in the wild card series. That distinctive stretch style of Kershaw. Ball hit through the middle. Marte around third. He's going to score. And the Diamondbacks, who had to come from behind in both games in Milwaukee, jump in front here at Dodger Stadium. Yeah, they had six unanswered runs in game one, five unanswered runs in game two, but playing from on top. And their young rookie who's just had one of the finest seasons. Stolen bases, slug, defense. Here gets them on the board with a single up the middle. And now Tommy Pham. Pham is a 10-year veteran with his seventh big league club. Began the year with the Mets. Late pickup by Arizona, and he's been helpful in August and September. Tori Lavella was talking about Fam. Not only was he great on the field, but so important to this young ball club when they went through that stretch of losing 25 of 32. It was Fam that was able to kind of get these young players uh, back playing the way they were playing earlier in the season. Corbin Carroll who swiped 54 in 59 attempts leads away held by Freeman. Line to left a base hit. Carroll stops at second. The ball hit to center as the leadoff man of the game by Cattell Marte was ruled a double questionable could have been an error on Altman. So based on that decision three straight hits by the D-backs to open the game off Kershaw. All the balls hit too. Bob right on the nose by the Diamondbacks who have come out and have come out very aggressive against the great Kershaw. Now Christian Walker. Five career home runs off Kershaw. No one has hit more than that against the great left hander. Nolan Arenado first with the Rockies now of late with the Cardinals also has five against Kershaw. Two on nobody out and a run home in the top of the first. I'm out. Base runners this year were only successful six out of ten against Kershaw trying to steal. Carroll did not try to steal first base but he will stay at second I think to let Walker hit because mm -hmm. of all those numbers you said and his power. But if Walker makes an out look for Carroll to maybe double steal with fam. The one one to Walker. Misses outside. Oh, 
That's something. Half of his hits have been home runs. Two and two. Kershaw went 13 and five this year. Didn't have enough innings to qualify for the title, but would have been second behind Blake Snell, the likely Cy Young Award winner, with an ERA of 2.46. Tap foul. He actually got deep into games before going on the injured list with a bad shoulder. He was pitching seven innings on good nights. Now five innings is all Dave Roberts hopes for. He hasn't thrown more than 84 pitches since coming off the I.L. in August. Maybe that's why he went on the I.L. because of those long innings uh, or deep into games early in the season. Walker bounces it foul and it holds it two and two. Listen he's a different pitcher now. Annually he'll make 20 to 24 starts. He'll pitch 130 140 innings when he's out there. He's excellent. He's just not out there as long as he was before. 15 outs 16 outs usually his max. His 14th pitch of this inning is driven to deep left back way back and off the wall. One run is home as Carroll sprints for the plate and they'll have second and third with a two nothing lead and Kershaw is yet to retire a hitter. Well it's the first curveball we've seen from Kershaw and this one of the hanging variety stays up in the strike zone. Walker was a little out in front of it but he's so strong and he's able to hit it even with that top spin against the base of the wall in left field before Peralta could get to it. It was a great read by both base runners Carroll and Pham. Now Gabriel Moreno the catcher. Conked on the head by the backswing of Bryce Terang of the Brewers in game one of that series is not in concussion protocol was a little woozy sat out the rest of that game and the second game but he's checked out completely fine according to Terry Lavello. And in there Bob, for a strike 0 and 2. And Bob in some ways maybe the most important Diamondback behind the plate not only his defensive play his offense. But they win when he's in the lineup. 284 for the season, 352 against left handers. Kershaw ahead of him, 0 and 2. Nice job. Come out. These are striking numbers. 20 games over 500 in the games he catches, and 14 under in the games he doesn't. Two and two. And when you talk about Moreno, these are Yadier Molina type numbers. Yeah. When he catches, the staff ERA is around four. When he doesn't, it's well north of five. That's the difference he makes. No analytics for the leadership qualities of Moreno. Foul back, still two and two. You know, there's an old adage that the hitters will let you know what your stuff looks like tonight. Hellacious, vicious hacks by the Diamondbacks through the first four hitters of the lineup. Full count. Lourdes Goriel Jr. is on deck. Kershaw, when he has his good starts to games, You'll see really two pitches his four seamer and his slider inside the righties. He's had to go to the curveball because they've been less effective. Yeah. High fly ball to deep left field. Forget about it. It's gone. A disastrous start for Clayton Kershaw. Moreno hit only seven during the regular season. 
put a major charge into that one. Five nothing D-backs and every D-back who has faced Kershaw has delivered a hit and they've all been hit hard. Always tries to get that slider underneath the hands of the righty to jam them. This ball never made it there, stayed right in the middle of the plate. And Moreno with a loud answer. Goriel stands in. Ball one to the left fielder. Hey, who's to tell these D-backs that they don't belong? They beat the Brewers twice. They come in against the Dodgers who won 100 games again. They're up 5-0 before they make an out. Baseball doesn't know. The baseball doesn't know that they only won 84 games. And think about it this way. They had to play postseason like baseball the entire month of September. Mm -hmm. And also, they already have two postseason wins under their belt. That'll make the seats. I was saying at his best, Kershaw is good for 15 or 16 outs. What if he didn't get any? As Sheehan's in the bullpen now for the Dodgers. Still one and two to Goriel. Quiet murmuring here at Dodger Stadium. And you know it isn't so much just that they might fall behind one nothing in a crapshoot best out of five. They're feeling for Clayton Kershaw. Yeah. Hit the short. Rojas has it. There's the first out. Let's go down to Lauren. Bob, I guess Gabby feels just fine. We saw him hit by a backswing against Milwaukee. Tori Lovello said he's passed every test. And I spoke with Gabby yesterday. He said there's no headaches, no disorientation. I feel 100% obvious after that. <laughs> yeah. In Milwaukee, he got a little nauseous on the bench. That's when they pulled the trigger and took him out of the ball game. They're all nauseous in the Dodger dugout. <laughs> Alec Thomas hit just 230. But he had a home run in game two in Milwaukee that started the D-backs comeback in that game. It's the Dodgers will have to come back tonight. There's a follow through on the swing by Turang. Got him real good in the back of the helmet. Time, time, time. Here you go. Thank you. Two and one to Thomas. It almost defies logic. Clayton Kershaw's regular season numbers, all of them, his whole resume is immaculate. <laughs> and in the postseason, while he has had some brilliant outings, he just hasn't been the Clayton Kershaw that we know during the regular season. Yeah, it's messy at times. You know, I think he suffered from early in his career. He was so great with Cy Youngs and MVPs that his day had to be the day that they won each and every time that didn't come to pass. And now that I can't say he's more hittable because if you look at the numbers he's not more hittable but certainly his stuff is not what it used to be. Well, his fastball used to be in the mid 90s now it barely touches 90. The curveball used to be devastating. It's more hittable now and he doesn't rely on it as much as he once did. He's a different pitcher but he's been able to figure out a different way to be effective yeah. until we get to October. Three, two. Three two pitch. Got a piece of it. You're just seeing a, a stuff that's not what you see in the regular season for Kershaw even in 2023 behind lots of full counts. Here's his 34th pitch of the first inning. And he walks Thomas. A left handed hitter who comes up with an average of 230 
And that indicates that Kershaw just is not on his game to walk this guy. And if you're Dave Roberts and you're taking out one of the kings of the game, you know what your team has done against Merrill Kelly. How far do you let it go? Evan Longoria celebrating his 38th birthday today. That'll be a disengagement with disgust there by Kershaw. Yeah. And Longoria slams one toward the gap in left center field and out and dives but can't get it. It will go to the wall. Thomas on his way to third and being waved home. It's a double for Longoria. The peg to the plate is late and it's six nothing Diamondbacks. I'm out. Four seamer supposed to be away and down. It's up and middle to the birthday boy. 38 year old Evan Longoria Roberts comes to get Kershaw he's had a rough time before in the postseason this has to be the worst of all those outings birds maybe a thousand is insufficient in this case there's your caption the line right there he retired only one man and even that ball was hit sharply I'm probably the only man that knows how he feels right there. 35 years ago on this mound, I gave up six runs in an inning in a game seven against the Los Angeles Dodgers. I know that feeling exactly. For the Mets in 88? In 1988, yes. Uh, Emmett Sheehan on the mound for the Dodgers. His debut, he threw six shutout innings against the Giants. They'll need that kind of effort here tonight. Sheehan will be in their starting rotation at some point. First man he'll face is the switch hitting shortstop, Geraldo Perdomo. Longoria at second with only one out. And ah. there's a strike. Muncie in close at third. Perdomo will bunt for a hit and led the majors with 14 sacrifice bunts which may not be in order tonight for any Diamondback up by half a dozen Evan Longoria down at second base played in only 74 games during the regular season because of a bad back. But come the postseason, put on a defensive show at third base in Milwaukee, and now an RBI double in his first at bat in the division series. Swing and a miss, strike three. So Sheehan retires the first man he faces. Well, the two pitches that play for Sheehan, you saw in that first at bat against Perdomo. Great life on his fastball and an excellent changeup for the New York native. The Diamondbacks have batted around. Here's Marte for the second time in the first inning. Began the ruckus with a double off Outman's glove in left center. Tight 101. Check swing foul. Obviously Kershaw not being able to get out of the first messes up any plan that Dave Roberts might have had. However, there are multiple off days in this series. Off day between games one and two. Another between two and three and if it goes five, a third between four and five. Up high so 
that means you can pretty much go back to almost any reliever unless they throw four or five innings in the succeeding game except for games three and four in Arizona and you can get through five games if it goes that far with only three starters that's true for both teams and that's probably the way they'll approach it the 2 2 pitch runs the count out full the most important part of that off day tomorrow is that they can use the pitchers to stay in this game if this was a regular season you would not see your sprinter bullpen you would see your B bullpen mm -hmm. almost a game that you don't give up but you know what I'm saying hard to stay in ripped gloved by Freeman terrific play takes it himself to put a merciful end from the Dodgers perspective to the Arizona first but they score six times before Freeman's play retires Marte and ends the inning. Earlier in Atlanta, seven Philly pitchers combined to shut the Braves out. 3 0. Now here, Dave Roberts' team is down 6 0 before they even take a swing. The two best teams in the National League, clearly, this season and over many seasons, could be on the brink, forced to win three out of four just to do what they were expected to do. Dodgers have nine turns at bat to rally from a six run deficit. Two and out of Mookie Betts. As Merrill Kelly's numbers, 25 of his 30 starts, he allowed three runs or less. Run support, just a little over four per game this year. He got six in the first. Ha! This is shaping up as an unhappy 31st birthday for one of the game's great players, Mookie Betts. Very much in the MVP discussion, along with Ronald Acuna Jr. of the Braves. And Matt Olson of Atlanta and Mookie's teammate Freddie Freeman here. All four of them have had seasons good enough to win the MVP in most years. Only one can. The 3 1. Well, defense for the Diamondbacks behind Kelly today. Tori Lovello said, We pitch it and we catch it. Longoria third base had a Brooks Robinson game one in Milwaukee Perdomo Marte Walker and Moreno behind the plate and Gurriel Jr. Thomas and Carroll in the outfield Moreno has thrown over, out over 39 percent of runners trying to steal this season. Kelly's three two to Mookie fouled away as a team. The D-backs made the fewest errors in all of Major League Baseball this year, only 56, close to the record set by the Orioles in 2013 with 54 miscues. Merrill Kelly. Another 3-2 to Betts. I'm good, baby. I'm good. Thank you. And he got a piece of it. Arizona to speak to your point 990 fielding percentage this year that was a club record for the Diamondbacks. Well Merrill Kelly has an excellent chance now spotted a 6 1 lead to reverse this trend but as you mentioned earlier on 16 career starts against the Dodgers. 0 and 11 including 0 and 2 this year ERA five and a half just when you think it can't get worse it does after this pitch which is ripped to deep left but foul in this ballpark in eight career starts Merrill Kelly is 0 and 5 ERA over seven hmm. this would be a good time to turn that around his first ever postseason start. Got him looking. Mookie is hopping mad as he turns toward the dugout. Well, the Diamondbacks try to win games on the margins, and Kelly tries to win games on the corners. He's got six different pitches, 
two seam fastball there that came back and got the call from Carapaza at the bottom of the strike zone. Freddie Freeman hit 331 with 29 homers and 102 driven in. The Dodgers had four hitters, top 100 RBIs Betts, Freeman, JD Martinez, and Max Muncy. They'll need some of that to come back tonight. Huh. You and I were talking before the game. Why has Kelly got the record he has against this great Dodger team? He's got all the weapons you'd like. Mm -hmm. Four or five different secondary pitches. But the Dodgers slug the best in baseball against those secondary pitches all season long. His one two to Freeman. Well Kelly has one of the best change ups in the game. It's a swing and miss pitch. He virtually never allows a homer on it. But the Dodgers as a team have the highest slugging percentage against change ups in all of baseball. It's a bad mix for Kelly. Hit hard. Gloved by Walker gets to his feet and shovels it to Kelly to retire Freeman. The Hank Aaron Award is presented annually to the best overall offensive performer in each league. You can cast your vote for the top offensive performer in the National and American Leagues today by scanning the QR code or enter at MLB.com backslash Aaron. Now Will Smith. The Dodger catcher hit 261 with 19 home runs. Pleasant night at Dodger Stadium. Temperature was 80 degrees around game time, but low humidity. Very unpleasant set of developments so far for the Dodger fans. Will Smith did not have the offensive year he had a year ago, much due to some injuries. Concussion in the middle of the season. He stayed in that third slot, though, even with the emergence, not emergence, but JD Martinez getting hot as the season wore on. Smith stayed in that third hole. But to your point, over the last five years, his composite OPS of 840 is the highest of any catcher mm. in the major leagues. Kind of surprising. Higher than JT Real Muto. Higher than the Royals, Sal Perez. There's a base hit. Smith rounds first, but down six, he'll stay there. When you think of these Dodger teams in the past, it's been pitching first. But this team this year with so many injuries to their starting staff a lot of innings eaten up by rookie starting pitching it's been their hitting that has been first and foremost the strength of the Dodgers. In terms of run differential over the course of 162 games the Dodgers were plus 207. Oh there's a terrific diving snare by Christian Walker at first base. He won a gold glove a year ago to go along with his slugging and he turns Max Muncy away with a tremendous play to end the Dodger first. Tonight's StatCast 3D is powered by Google Cloud. Here's a look at the six hits 
in the first inning that produced six runs and there's not a bloop or a bleeder among them. Yeah four over 100 miles an hour. With the 110.8 mile an hour hit home run by Moreno. Emmett Sheehan back to the mound ah. facing Corbin Carroll who had an RBI single in the first. Sheehan had 11 starts for the Dodgers this summer. 94 was his high pitch on July 17. A high drive to deep right field. This ball is gone and I mean long gone. The minute it left the bat you knew there was no way the ballpark would hold that one. Pound for pound. Maybe the strongest player in the league is Corbin no. Carroll. He's 5'10 and 165, had 25 home runs during the regular season, threw in 10 triples. This is his second home run of the postseason. Seven ah. nothing Arizona. Strength of Sheehan is his fastball and change, and that was a changeup that he turned over, didn't sink, stayed right in the middle of the plate. Carroll had a 440 foot home run. In Milwaukee in the wild card series. Who? Just a beautiful swing. He knew it right away as well. One and two to Tommy Pham, who singled in the first. I know you're all wondering how far did it actually go. Back in the day you just say deep into the bleachers but we're going to have an exact figure I'm guessing. Halfway up the pavilion. Four twenty one is the official distance. Still one and two to fail. The Diamondbacks have ten official at bats in this game plus a walk. Seven hits in those 10 at bats, including two home runs. Mookie Betts can't get it. Make it eight for 11. They have brought out the thunder from the desert. My, oh, my. Number 53, Christian. Just thought a pretty good breaking ball from Sheehan away. Fam goes that way and pushes it past Mookie Betts at second base. Let's go to Lauren. Uh, Bob, Tommy Pham acquired at the deadline, and Mike Hazen, EVP and general manager of the D backs, told me I'm obsessed with his want to. He told me the first series he played in when he got to Arizona was in Colorado. Tommy had a game winning ah. hit, but when Mike saw him in the clubhouse after, he was hanging his head, and Mike said, What the heck? Tommy said, I missed the cutoff, man. You didn't see that? Mike <laughs> told me he can't teach. Obsession with success, right? And Tommy has it in droves. And he's two for two so far tonight. Here's Christian Walker. RBI double off the wall and left in the first. You know, I said before when they went 20, lost 25 of 32 after the All Star break, it was Tommy Pham and others, Longoria, that helped them back on their way. And Tommy Pham's way has always been the same. Hard work is what gets you through, and that's what he taught some of those young Diamondback players. Up high one and two Christian Walker has already had a good night RBI double and a sparkling play at first base to take a hit away from Max Muncy. Well Tommy Pham thought that she and balked 
the umpires th didn't agree. Thought maybe he moved a little bit in his stretch. But Carapazzo says no go. Wind it up. Didn't see any movement there. She checks Fam and comes home to Walker. And the count evens. Well, that's one thing they haven't done wrong yet. <laughs> Speaking of the Dodgers pitchers, hit a man, but now they have. Hit by pitch by the changeup from Sheehan who lost control. Trying to come inside. Gets underneath that ball and it just runs in on Walker. Mark Pryor is going to be out there to talk to his right hander. Think about the Dodger pitching this way. Last four seasons before this year, they were number one in pitching, ERA. This year, 4.06. 15th. Mm -hmm. Well, you can wear what the players are wearing on field during the postseason. Check out the largest selection of authentic jerseys, caps, t shirts, and more, and root your favorite team on at MLBShop.com. Well, when you think about the Dodgers, first, Tyler Anderson, who went 15 and 5 for them last year with a very good ERA, left for the Angels as a free agent. Dustin May, Tony Gonsolin, Lost to injuries. Walker Bueller hoped to come back from Tommy John surgery in time to help in September and October, but no, they had to shut him down. Julio Urias, 20 and 3 in 21, 17 and 7 last year, and led the league in ERA. His future is in doubt now after he was arrested on suspicion of felony domestic violence, and that's the second time he's had an arrest following a domestic violence incident. He's only 27, about to be a free agent. His future both with the Dodgers and maybe in MLB yeah. clouded right now. Moreno lifts one down the right field line. Hayward coming in from right field into foul ground makes a sliding catch. And the five time Gold Glover pegs it back to the middle of the infield. The first chance for Dodger fans to applaud tonight. Hayward has those long strides. That pop up looked like no one was going to get close to it, but he always seems to find a way to catch it. As good as the glove man if you'll ever see during his career with the Braves, and Cardinals, and Cubs, and Dodgers. So to complete the previous thought, the Dodgers somehow win 100 games again, win the division handily. Here's a line drive, another base hit for the D-backs. Lourdes Goriel comes through, another run crosses the plate, and it's eight to nothing. Sheehan fairly, faring scarcely better than Kershaw did. Locked in are these D-backs tonight. Another breaking ball hit down the line. Nice play by Peralta to get to it. Does this allow the one run to score? Or it might have been worse. Fam scored. Walker to third on the double by Goriel. Now Alec Thomas who walked his first time. The infield creeps in. And she and misses high and outside. So started to say that Clayton Kershaw is the only pitcher left as they begin October from their opening day starting rotation mm. and it's possible that we've seen the last of him for this postseason after tonight. Lance Lynn likely to get the ball for game three. They acquired a midseason or actually toward the trade deadline from the White Sox. 2 0 pitch coming to Thomas mm. way high. Well, this is one of those cases you have a young pitcher who probably never thought he would ever be in the game in the first inning, just flustered here as he begins the second inning of work. Right, 
walked him on four pitches. Second free pass for Thomas tonight. That is ghastly from a Dodger perspective but all kinds of cheering that almost can be heard from Phoenix last as we time, sit here in Dodger Stadium. Last time I saw a game like this it was the Cardinals against Atlanta in Atlanta. Freeman was the first baseman for that Braves team that night. Evan Longoria <laughs> takes a strike. With the bases loaded now, the Dodger infield moves back looking for a double play. Longoria was the American League's rookie of the year in 2008 with Tampa Bay. They made a surprise run to the World Series before losing to the Phillies. He's hit over 300 big league home runs, three time gold glover. Now in the twilight of his career but so far he's had a very good October for the D backs chopper foul really the face of those Tampa Bay Rays in mm -hmm. his time there right yes he was. he was drafted to be a star and he was a star with that organization and wasn't sure if he was going to retire or not after his year in San Francisco but thought that Arizona fit him perfectly. A high fly ball to deep right field. Hayward goes back to the edge of the track to make the catch. It'll plate another run. And it's nine zip. So a sack fly for Longoria. Boy, they've done everything in this game. Hit for power, taking great at bats, sacrifice flies, hit by pitches, walks, doubles. Number two, Geraldo Perdomo. This is where the manager of the losing team at some point will say, it's only one game, but it feels like more. Sure does. Here's Perdomo. Struck out his first time, so he's yet to get in on the fun. Made only three errors. All season long at shortstop best fielding position of anyone among all MLB shortstops. Foul back going to well, the Dodgers are attempting history here. No team uh, has ever come back from a nine run deficit. Not one in, in any postseason. postseason game. Not one. Why do I know this but like in 1929 <laughs> Cubs and the A's eight run deficit was overcome. Why do I know that. What I can't remember is which team came back. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Somebody was up eight nothing. And lost. But nobody's ever come back in October from nine down. Two and two. And now Sheehan is about to unleash his 42nd pitch. So if it's a lost cause in a certain sense Dave Roberts may want him to eat up as many innings as he can. But at this rate. He's not going to be around much longer. Runner goes. Swing and a miss, and that's that. Pernomo strikes out for the second time, but that's just a footnote. After one and a half, nine nothing, Arizona.
He doesn't have to rush. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's exactly what we hoped for when we came to the ballpark tonight. J.D. Martinez fouls off the 0-2 pitch. For those of you hanging on the answer to this, yeah. Game 4 of the 1929 World Series in Philadelphia, not the Phillies, the Philadelphia A's, A's of Lefty Grove and Al Simmons and Mickey Cochran, I guess. They were down 8-0 to, wouldn't you know it, the Cubs. Because with the exception of 2016, Cub type things just continue to happen, including down the stretch this year. Cubs up 8 0, and the A's score 10 times in the seventh inning and win the game 10 8. You know, talking to Tori Lovello before the game and talking about Merrill Kelly, he said that in the past, sometimes he was not as aggressive as he is in the regular season at this ballpark. Jason Hayward shattered bat little bloop into center field and Alec Thomas comes on to take it and that he would get in too many hitters counts and that's why he's had such a hard time at Dodger Stadium and against the Dodgers this score allows him to be as aggressive as he'd like yep fair enough might finally break the hex of 0 and 11 and 0 and 5 in this ballpark with an ERA upwards of seven entering this game but you can breathe a little easier when you're spotted a six run lead before you throw a pitch because of the record he has against the Dodgers he is not breathing easier he's grinding on every pitch David Peralta the left fielder nine years as a Diamondback prior to this season when he joined the Dodgers inside Driven to center, Thomas turns, racing toward the 395 sign. It's off the wall. Peralta sprints for second and has a two out double. This ball hit right on the nose. Thomas plays a pretty shallow center field. Could not get there, but played it perfectly. Off the carom, he got it in quickly, and Peralta against his ex-mates with the double and the Freddie dance at second. The rookie center fielder James Outman. He had 23 home runs, but struck out 181 times. things considered he's had a good rookie season and has a bright future but James Outman is not a good name for a hitter it's like Bob walk <laughs> for a pitcher that's right doesn't line up you want a name like Brandon belt that's good oh well, interesting to put on a pickoff in a nine nothing game and the fans didn't appreciate it no need concentration should be just on the hitter now even though Longoria is a mile off the third base bag and deep, Peralta's not going anywhere. <laughs> ha! Altman, who began the season on fire, Bob, then struggled as most young hitters do in the middle, trying to make that adjustment, and did. Six home runs in September. The 1 1 pitch. 
Bloop toward third and Longoria has it. That'll do it for the Dodgers in the bottom of the second. If you're just tuning in, that's not a misprint. They trail it 9 nothing. Play ball is baseball's global youth initiative to highlight the fun and accessible ways to play our great game. To learn more, including how to find a league near you, go to playball.org and follow at Playball on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Top of the third, and this is the third at bat for the leadoff man for the D-backs, Cattell Marte. He's doubled and grounded out. Back in 2019, Marte hit 329 and lost the batting title by the narrowest of margins to Christian Yelich of the Brewers. Marte's average was rounded up to 329. Yelich is rounded down, so by less than a percentage point, Yelich became the batting champion. I'm out. Marte's nickname is PK, which is Dominican slang for someone who carries themselves with swagger. <laughs> Just about everybody in the Arizona dugout has some swagger tonight. Hit a big home run in that wild card series off Corbin Burns in game one. Struck him out. Dave Roberts gracious enough to talk with Lauren between innings. Here it is. Dave, rested bullpen. How do you navigate this the rest of the way? Yeah, this is a tough one. I didn't expect to be in this situation. Um, I think we're going to try to get Evan uh, Emmett as long as we can. And then we've got uh, uh, we've got uh, Shelby Miller to go two innings. We got the two lefties to go one and one. And uh, if we have to use Michael Grove, we'll use Michael. But uh, I just want to kind of cover this game and be ready for the next four. Realistic outlook, Corbin Carroll, RBI single and a solo home run. Two straight fastballs from Sheehan there after hitting that changeup 421 feet. Popped up on the infield. Rojas in front of Betts. That's the second out. On the verge of a quiet inning here for the Diamondbacks, though we're not jumping to any conclusions. <laughs> Tommy Pham, the DH tonight, has a pair of singles. That was Sheehan's 50th pitch out of the bullpen. Uh, it's approach, approaching what 90 pitches 85 to 90 pitches by both Kershaw and Sheehan here in the third. Hit through the middle and they will not go quietly not a one two three inning. Third straight single for Tommy Pham. You did speak too soon. Yeah. That's a fact. 87th pitch there for the Dodgers. Dave McKay is the first base coach down there. His 40th consecutive year as a major league coach, 10th with Arizona, and prior to that, he was with Tony Larusa mm -hmm. in both Oakland and for a long stretch with the St. Louis Cardinals. Fam against the Dodgers this year was only four for 26, three for three now in this game. Past history does not hold tonight. That's right. One way to look at this Miguel Rojas hitting ninth for the Dodgers has not come to the plate in this game. 
Tommy Pham already has three hits. And we've been playing for an hour. Seems like more than that to Dave <laughs> Roberts. 1-1 one, one pitch to Christian Walker. Has an RBI double, then was hit by a pitch. Up and in. We came on the air saying that the division series yeah. is the most perilous series, not for every team. But especially for a team that has been excellent throughout the season, or in the case of the Braves and the Dodgers, for many successive seasons. And it's playing out that way in both Atlanta and in Los Angeles. A team from their own division, the Phillies last year with the Braves, and now a rematch this time. A team 14 games behind Atlanta, beat them in the division series. Last year, in the National League West it was the Padres 22 back of the Dodgers losers of 14 of 19 the way the schedule was then against Dave Roberts mm. team and they beat them in four in the division series and now the D backs 16 games behind the Dodgers in the National League West pretty much in control of game one. Yeah they're trying to repeat what the Padres Let's did go. last season when the Dodgers won 111 games. Three two pitch fam takes off and it's fouled back over the last decade the Dodgers winning percentage is far and away yeah. the best in baseball both leagues Dave Roberts 630 career winning percentage well he doesn't have as many years as some all time great managers that's the highest of all time but it doesn't guarantee that you can run the full gauntlet now that is the major yeah. league postseason. The Braves of a generation ago won 14 straight division titles. Got to the World Series five times, but only won it once. There's a two out walk, which pushes Pham to second base, and Walker is aboard. It's more tournament style now, more March madness in October. Mm -hmm. And that's why you can make a case for reseeding the playoffs Orlando. after the wild card round. It would make more sense for the Dodgers to be playing the Phillies. In fact, considering what Arizona's done, the Dodgers wish they could play the 1927 Yankees instead tonight. But in any case, that would be the two and three of the remaining teams. And it would be the D backs who had the worst record of the survivors that would play the Braves. That would make the most sense. Gabriel Moreno, three run homer in the first, ha! then flied out his next time up. And there's a case to be made for this as well and this is to take nothing away from the Phillies or the Diamondbacks or to assume anything that's going to happen and what remains of these two National League division series. But you can make a case that after the wild card round every series should be best of seven a truer test than best of five. That's inside you might have to shorten the regular season to 156 or 158 yeah. to accommodate it but it would be a truer and fairer test in some ways the Diamondbacks are positioned perfectly for this five game series Kelly and Gallon have a chance to pitch twice if they're needed and as they showed Milwaukee playing their best ball offensively right now with those unanswered runs Zach Gallon 17 and 9 for the year ERA 3.47 210 innings pitched will go in game two Monday could come back in game five if it goes that far a week from tonight at Dodger Stadium he's getting ready already if Gallon is on his game against the rookie Bobby Miller in game two then the D backs conceivably take a two nothing lead back home to Chase Field Miller's been awfully good though probably the best of all those starting pitchers that are rookies that have eaten up a lot of innings for the Dodgers this summer. Two on two out. And a 2 2 pitch coming to Moreno. Swing and a miss, strike three. Two strikeouts in the inning for Sheehan. D backs put a couple on but don't score. Still 9 0.
The 2023 National League Division Series is presented by Booking.com. And you can customize your feed and get personalized stats and highlights and enjoy free live streams with the MLB app, your home for postseason baseball. You can download the MLB app today. Miguel Rojas hit 236 for the year, plays a strong shortstop. Ron, you think about the circumstances the Dodgers have faced. Two years ago, Corey Seager leaves. Yeah. Then Trey Turner leaves as a free agent. Gavin Lux was going to fill one of those middle infield spots. Tears his ACL during spring training. They were up against it in the middle infield. Mookie Betts alleviated a good bit of that problem with his versatility, being able to play second and occasionally short when needed. Well, Rojas, who came up with the Dodgers, they decided to re-sign a familiar face, and as Dave Roberts has said, he has been unbelievable defensively all season long. Got hit in the wrist, hand in the wrist, in the last Friday of the season. Weren't sure, but once the MRI came back, he says he's 100 percent. Yeah, he was a rookie with the Dodgers in 2014, then went to the Marlins for eight seasons. Back to the West Coast in 2023. Chopper over the mound, and he'll beat that one out. Well, ball up the middle. Watch Marte tries to flip it with the backhand to the shortstop Perdomo to try yeah. to make an unbelievable play, but not to be. They, even if they did that cleanly, no chance. <laughs> no chance. You or I would have beaten that one out. But awfully pretty. Yeah. We appreciate the effort. Mookie Betts struck out looking in the first. Lifts a fly ball into shallow center field. Back of second base. Who's going to take it from shortstop? It's Perdomo who makes the catch. And between innings, Lauren spoke with Tori Lovello. Tori, your guy's not scared of the breaking ball. What's impressed you most offensively? Just the way we're checking off of pitches. Um, we talked about the plan. You're seeing us execute, and our guys are going out there and doing it. To me, that's very powerful. When you talk about something and you react to it the way we have, we're in a good spot. I mean, you told me today Merrill's got that look in his eye. Just yeah. wait. Were you right? Yeah, so far so good. You know, he's just such a competitor. And I think he's having the mindset of going 1-0 today. No matter what happened in the past, or what, no matter what's going to happen in the future, just take care of today. That's been his mindset. Thanks, Tori. Thanks so much. Ball one to Freddie Freeman. Tori Lovello is in his seventh season as the D-backs manager. Manager of the year in 2017, when his team won 93 games, a 24-game improvement from the season before, before he arrived. But then, peaks and valleys, only two years ago, they lost 110. Now here they are in the postseason and leading the heavily favored Dodgers nine to nothing in game one. That 110 loss team he thought that the lowest point came in Milwaukee where he had to address the team found it ironic that his team was at its best when it won the wild card series at the same spot they were at their lowest two years prior. 2 0 pitch 3 and 0. Lovello played eight seasons in the major leagues with seven different teams switch hitter infielder career batting average of 224 but he loved the game stayed around it here he is as a big league skipper 3 0 pitch coming to Freeman high and away well Bob both these young managers Roberts and Lovello very impressive when you sit down with them before the games and, and hear them talk about their team. Mm -hmm. You know I like it that you refer to them as young managers. Lovello's 58 and Roberts is 57. Uh -huh. But to us I'm, I'm long in the tooth now. So yeah, yeah. makes sense. Got to say hey young fella how you doing. <laughs> They're good friends by the way. Both went to UCLA. Lovello left I believe the year that Robertson yeah. Roberts came in they never played together they kind of passed one another along the way Lovello's a Southern California kid grew up in Santa Monica Will Smith had a single his first time up 
When you're in Southern California, near Hollywood, you think of movies and television. Well, Tori Lovello's dad, Sam, produced and co-created Hee Haw. <laughs> it wasn't Masterpiece Theater, but it was kind of popular in its day. Smith lifts one to deep right. Back goes Carroll. Back to the warning track in front of the wall. He's got it. Rojas tags and takes third. Well, that's what the Dodgers will be looking for early in this game. Playing against this deficit of nine runs is one swing of the bat to try to get them to a spot where there's some hope. And Smith almost takes Kelly deep to right field. Ball kind of stuck in the air there. Looked for a while like it was going to travel. But just died into Carroll's glove. Brings up Max Muncy. Scorched one his first time up. But Walker at first base made a terrific backhanded stab to rob him of a hit. Down and in. So I asked Lavello, you were there in his office before the game, did you meet Minnie Pearl? <laughs> he said Dolly Parton, Loretta Lynn, Johnny Cash. Knew them all as a little kid because his dad produced Hee Haw. Said he'd wake up and they'd be at the breakfast table. Two and all. Lavello and Roberts are two of the most accessible. Every big league skipper yeah. understands his role. But Lavello and Roberts really will give you information, sit and talk for as long as you want to ask them questions. Both of them very engaging. Always use the phrase, they get it. They understand their position in place, how important what they say, what they say and what it means. Muncie swings and misses. He hit 212 this year. Kind of a poor man's Kyle Schwarber. 212 with 36 home runs and 183 strikeouts. To go with 85 walks. And big numbers against Kelly. Who falls behind him, 3 and 1. Rojas at third, Freeman at first. Martinez on deck. Bouncing ball. Walker's got it. Muncie barely gets out of the box. Unassisted put out. And that puts an end to the Dodger third. Fourth, Goriel, Thomas, and Longoria for the Diamondbacks, who lead it nine to nothing. Emmett Sheehan remains on the mound, ha! and that was his 66th pitch. Mm. He may wind up throwing 100 pitches out of the bullpen, and most starters pretty much are on the brink when they get to 100 pitches or close. I said before 94 is his high this season in his rookie year on July 17th. Hit sharply but Mookie Betts is perfectly positioned. This is TBS Total Motion presented by Progressive. And most of the motion around the bases has been done by the Diamondbacks tonight. Six in the first, three in the second. Kershaw left after retiring only one hitter. Shortest start in his career. He had a start where he only went one inning, three outs. Never has been taken out in the first. 
You know, a moment ago, that ground ball to Mookie Betts reminds me of the following. You can no longer shift, but you certainly can shade. Yeah. As witness where Rojas is right now, the shortstop. But sometimes it's even closer to lining up behind the second base bag. So there are still a lot of balls hit through the middle, which for a hundred years you always assume was a base mm -hmm. hit, that turn into outs. Hayward and Wright tucks that away. So Thomas is retired, and it brings up Longoria. He celebrated his 38th birthday tonight with an RBI double and a sacrifice fly. That's off Sheehan who recovers and shovels it off to Freeman. First time tonight the Diamondbacks have gone out in order. And as you see from Sheehan's expression I'm OK. Other than the scoreboard I'm OK. Here's the upcoming postseason schedule with the Rangers and Astros each up one nothing those games tomorrow on FS1 day off in the National League resumes on Monday in Atlanta and here at Dodger Stadium on TBS. Merrill Kelly working on a shutout through three J.D. Martinez struck out his first time. Martinez ended the season scorching hot mm -hmm. last 13 games 347 with seven home runs. He was a D back before joining the Red Sox for part of a season in 2017 hit 45 home runs that year 29 of them with Arizona four of them in a single night here at Dodger Stadium. Right. Last time anybody has hit four home runs in a game in the major leagues Martinez for Arizona against the Dodgers six years ago those 13 games you talk about where he hit the seven home runs he had 17 RBI as well Kelly's 0 2 pitch to him bounce to third Longoria has it across the diamond to retire Martinez more on Merrill Kelly from Lauren uh, Bob I'm watching pitching coach Brent Strom emphatically gesture towards Merrill I asked Merrill what's Brent like he's worked with Cole and Verlander and some of the best Merrill said he's great he's just very intense he told me I got an email on Christmas Day from Brent Strom and I thought for sure it was going to say how's your family <laughs> Merry Christmas nope it said Merrill I figured out a way to make your fastball have late life. Call me, <laughs> Strom. <me. laughs> uh, a pitching coach who cares is a good one, right, Ron? Yeah, it hasn't been a straight line for Kelly when you think about it. Drafted by the Tampa Bay Rays, didn't find any firm foothold there. Went to the KBO, Korean Korea. baseball. Yep. Pitched for SK Wyverns, went 48 and 32, and he said learned how to pitch. And when he came back and signed with Arizona, he's from the Scottsdale area. He decided he'd sign with his hometown team. It's been one of the most underrated starting pitchers the last two seasons. And if this series goes the distance to five mm. a week from tonight game five Merrill Kelly will be celebrating his 35th birthday and his pitching coach Brent Strom will be celebrating his 75th birthday. One two pitch to Hayward outside. Well, Brent Strom is one of the best who ever did it as far as pitching coaches are concerned. A love for his pitchers always trying to figure out like Lauren said ways for them to get better loves power arms loves a big hard slider but can work with anyone Hayward strikes out he's over two on the night well this is the signature pitch I think for Kelly against left handed hitters that change up that he throws a little harder than most most pitchers feel like they need that. 10 mile an hour difference between their fastball change up he does not gets a lot of drop and a lot of swing and miss with that pitch his third strikeout of the night brings up David Peralta who had a double in his first at bat 
back to Strom so much success most recently with Houston and then he says look I'm in my 70s I got to retire I just want to go to sit on a beach somewhere <laughs> but then in the offseason he confessed uh -huh. I got the itch again. Yeah. He said I want to sit on a beach in Mexico Phoenix is technically closer to the Mexican border than Houston so maybe that fit into his plans but here he is in his mid 70s doing it all over again. I'm thinking of Shawshank Redemption and Zim Wantaneo. is that where he wanted to go. <laughs> Here's the 0 2 pitch. Got him looking back to back strikeouts four for the game and after four it's nine nothing Arizona. The 2023 MLB postseason on TBS is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Round out your protection with life, phone, and pet health insurance. Emmett Sheehan threw 71 pitches. Gave Dave Roberts three and two thirds. Now the third Dodger pitcher of the night is the veteran Shelby Miller. 33 year old right hander in his 11th big league season. You know Bob that was a solid job by Sheehan under the circumstances uh, to get those 11 outs for the Dodgers. Shelby Miller a number one pick of the Cardinals way back in 2009. 133 starts in his career bullpen here though with the Dodgers. Perdomo unlike most of his teammates hasn't done much at the plate tonight 0 for 2 pair of strikeouts. Lauren talked with Dave Roberts in addition to what we were able to play you on videotape. What did he tell you Lauren. Oh Bob I'm over by the Dodger dugout and after that last oh, no. inning Sheehan came off the mound. Dave gave him a big hug. He said you showed me major heart. Thank you. And then Dave told me I'm going with Shelby Miller. That's my plan. I need him for two innings. I need length. No less. I'm stretching here. <laughs> If he gives him two innings that gets him through six still three more innings to cover. Well the thrust a rookie into a postseason game under those circumstances. Fine job. Acquitted himself well did Emmett Sheehan. O2 pitch. Misses. You know you. obviously strategy is a big part of being a big league manager but so too is the relationship with the players and the vibe in the clubhouse. There are teams that have a lot of talent but it's the wrong mix where there's something not quite right in the clubhouse. That's not the case with Dave Roberts mm. and the Dodgers nor with Torre Lovello and the D backs. Hmm. Well Perdomo has the hat trick struck out three times. Fortunately his team hasn't really needed him. <laughs> Speak to your point Dave Roberts told us today of all the fine and talented teams that he's had with the Dodgers this might have been his favorite said he comes to work every day everyone in that dugout cares about everyone else he said that doesn't happen that often. Big swing and a miss from Cattell Marte. Well you know the old joke which probably doesn't apply in the age of Uber and players having better perks than they <laughs> once did but about teams that didn't really get along 25 players 25 That's camps. Right. Hit sharply but right at Mookie Betts bobbles it for a second has time to recover and throws Marte out. Here's Corbin Carroll's home run a long home run into the pavilion in right field in the second inning and it's TBS total motion presented by progressive hitters talk all the time about getting power from the ground up no one does it better than Corbin Carroll. His fourth at bat single for an RBI solo homer then he popped out. He pulls that left pant leg up kind of rests Thank that you. bat behind him and then seemingly heaves himself and all 160 pounds at the baseball. Whew. 
Breaking ball in there, one and two. Carroll grew up in Seattle. Consider the generation, logically enough, idolizing Ichiro, the great right fielder of the Mariners. And he strikes out to end the Diamondback fifth. After four and a half, it remains 9 nothing, Arizona. The 2023 National League Division Series is presented by Booking.com. And you can get into the game with Max and the Bleacher Report sports to add on. It's on us for a limited time. After the promo period, you can add it for $9.99 to a Max base plan. I have no idea what I just said, but I hope <laughs> some of those watching received it and will act upon it. People who watch a lot of TV know exactly what you said, Bob. Yeah. Glad somebody does. <laughs> Here's Outman, the rookie center fielder. Popped out his first time. Slow roller, second base. Marte throws him out. Well, the last inning was Kelly's best. And he couples that here with the first out to Outman. Just soft contact off Kelly so far. You mentioned earlier, Ron, that he went to Korea, pitched in the KBL for four years didn't make his major league debut in the United States until he was 30 years old in 2019. 12 and 8 this year. ERA 3.29 in 32 starts. But tonight is the chance to turn Dodger Stadium into something other than a house of horrors yeah. for him. Who would have thought coming into the game that it would be Kershaw who would be knocked mm -hmm. around tonight with his tremendous record in general at Dodger Stadium and particularly against the Diamondbacks and Kelly with a woeful record both against the Dodgers overall and mm -hmm. especially in this ballpark. But all those trends were completely reversed. This is spanked into center field but right at Thomas. It doesn't hurt also when the line drives. Or hit right at someone that helps as well. You know what happens when you have that kind of record against a team. Part of it is this Dodger team has been one of the best teams in baseball. Sure. So every time you face them, you're facing, you know, a World Series, NLCS kind of ball club with some of the best stars in the game. But also it gets in your head after a while, especially when it's 0 and 11, when you haven't won one time. Definitely gets in your brain. Mookie bats 0 for 2. Mentioned earlier, he's very much in the MVP discussion. Odds are Acuna wins it. Betts gets a lot of support and finishes second. There's only been one man in the history of baseball to be the MVP in both leagues. Right field, Carroll takes it to end the inning. Frank Robinson in 61 for the Reds, 66 for the Orioles. Mookie won it in the American League with the Red Sox, may do it in the National League eventually. Time for greatness on the field presented by Geico and all the greatness has resided on the Arizona side of the diamond. Gabriel Moreno blasting one out of the yard off Clayton Kershaw in the first. James Outman diving for that one couldn't get it. They just kept passing the baton. The carousel kept kept on spinning six in the first three in the second. Nine nothing since then. Well we documented that he has lost a lot of his velocity. That's what he was missing in the first location. And they were all over his secondary stuff. Tommy Pham is three for three all singles. Shelby Miller for his second inning now. Worked a one two three fifth with two strikeouts. We mentioned this at the start and I guess it bears repeating. If the Dodgers get off the deck assuming that they're going to come out on the losing end tonight. If they come back and win this series. 
basically all Dave Roberts team has done even though it's an achievement in the minds of the fans and much of the media yeah. they just did what they were expected to do they checked a box to move on if they lose it there'll be all kinds of fair or not all kinds of recriminations afterwards the Diamondbacks on the other hand can afford to be looser there's a fly ball to center field Outman's under it first time fam has been retired if they speaking of the Diamondbacks yeah. put on a good showing against the Dodgers and even if they lose it they've beaten Milwaukee a division winner they're going to take the first game against a team that won 100 games and won the National League West they can do respectably and they're not going to hear about it all offseason if and they don't advance a step in the right direction. Yeah. Christian Walker RBI double hit by a pitch and walked. So he's been on all three times. I was telling you before I've done the postseason for 16 years and all of its different mm -hmm. iterations and before 2012 you could not play a team in your division in the league division series only the LCS if both teams got that far maybe that's something that we'll look into again Christian Walker at the plate. Lauren Shahadi downstairs has more on him. And Bob Christian Walker, Evan Longoria, big time foodies. They target different restaurants every road trip they take. They also have a competition between the two of them. Who's a better chef? So I asked them if you were to cook for Ron Darling and Bob Costas, <laughs> ah. what would you make? You ready? Evan said filet, scalloped potatoes, shrimp cocktail and ice cream is fancy. Christian said I would make them a pizza in my pizza oven, extra Ooh. cheese, crispy crust, pepperoni and a beer. Which house you going to? Boy. You know I know Evan better than I know Christian. Yes. So I don't want to be impolite. So I'll go to Evan's house but I'd be tempted to veer off to Christian's house. I, I think uh, Christian had me at a beer with a pizza. And Christian strikes out. Who's to say we couldn't have lunch at one house and dinner at the other. There you go. Always trying to work the system. I yeah. love it. Don't want to diss anybody. Gabriel Moreno three run homer. Then fly to right and struck out. Shelby Miller has retired five in a row. A ball and a strike now to Moreno. When you have a guy speaking of Moreno yeah. as good as he is behind the plate as a receiver throwing out would be base dealers nearly 40 percent an outrageous number considering the uptick in steals around the major leagues leads all catchers in defensive runs saved which is a sophisticated metric saved some 20 plus runs over the average catcher over the course of the season and he hit 284 and well over 300 against lefties that okay. spins him away also has leadership qualities that are off the hook as Tori Lovello told us uh, this afternoon he's got the whole package I mean that's the great thing about the postseason he can hit seven in the regular season and have a big one here in the first. Bouncing ball gloved by Muncie whirling throw from somewhere near Santa Monica not in time. <laughs> so Moreno has an infield hit. Well we lost to Brooke Ro Brooks Robinson recently and this reminded me of the play in the 71 the World Indians Series well, off Lee May I believe yeah. it was of the Reds but that play was completed. 1970 not 71. Yeah that was amazing on AstroTurf and from foul ground. Goriel has an RBI double in three trips. On the first pitch a fly ball to the shallow center field. 
Outman comes in and tucks it away. To the bottom of the sixth. And it's still 9-0 D-backs. <laughs> if you say so, EJ. <laughs> well, what Ernie just told us backs up what we've been talking about yeah. much of the night. Line drive caught as Freeman is retired on the catch by Marte. So Freddie's now 0 for 2 with a walk. The 2023 MLB postseason on TBS is brought to you by Jeep. There's only one. So you fight all season to finish first to avoid the wild card round. But then if you lose that first game you're really up against it. You got to win. Look at the simple math. You got to win three out of four against a team even if they're not as good as you are over 162. A team good enough to make it to the postseason and maybe playing well at this particular time like the D-backs are on the verge of winning their third straight game against the division champion two against Milwaukee. This one pretty obviously here and all three on the road. It's really gotten to the point with this postseason and the way it's constructed now. It's not how well you did play. It's how well you are playing right now. Mm -hmm. And the D-back showed in Milwaukee uh, that they're playing the baseball that they played in the earlier part of the year. A shortstop Perdomo. Nice pick by Walker at first base. Saving what for Perdomo would be a rare error. We told you earlier, made only three all season. <laughs> now Max Muncy. Lined out, grounded out. So the Phillies started Ranger Suarez today first of seven pitchers who combined on a five hit shutout as the Phillies beat the Braves three nothing. On Monday after the off day tomorrow they'll come back with Zach Wheeler. Of course the Braves are deep enough they started Spencer Strider in game one they'll go with Max Fried mm -hmm. in game two. Here the D backs starting Merrill Kelly likely to come out of game one with the lead. And then go to Zach Gallen against the rookie Bobby Miller in game two mm. on Monday night. These are daunting circumstances for the Dodgers. Well, especially the way Gallen has pitched all season long. There he is with the beard right behind Dave McKay. He'll get a lot of Cy Young votes this year. One two pitch. Two and two. It's really gone back and forth in the Cy Young. Justin Steele looked like. Late, he had a shot. Mm -hmm. Spencer Strider's had quite a year, especially with strikeouts. But Blake Snell, in his last 20 plus starts, almost unhittable. You scratch your head with the Padres, not only what they have in their lineup Tatis Jr. and Bogarts and Machado and Soto, Soto <laughs> and Hassan Kim, but Snell's likely to win the Cy Young, and Josh Hader has been lights out in their bullpen. How could they have had such a lousy season? Walker to the bag by himself. That's it. A one, two, three, six. Nine nothing D backs. By authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. 
after Clayton Kershaw retired only one hitter in the first and was charged with six runs. Emmett Sheehan threw three and two thirds, gave up three runs in the second inning. Shelby Miller, two shutout innings. And now the fourth Dodger pitcher is the 26 year old right hander Michael Grove. Drafted in 2018 by the Dodgers from the University of West Virginia. 18 games this year, 12 of them starts for Grove. First guy he faces is Alec Thomas. He's walked twice and fly to right. This is the kind of game, big league level, American Legion ball, whatever it is, you're up 9 nothing. And you hear the cry in the dugout, save some for tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, in this case, is Monday. No such thing. Don't waste them all. Save some. We got enough for tonight. I don't think that's how this Diamondback team is wired right now. No, they're feeling it. They're locked in. Coming into this game, you know, we've mentioned Merrill Kelly's terrible record against the Dodgers overall and here at Dodger Stadium. Virtually every hitter in the Dodger lineup has owned him. And all of that has been turned inside out. D backs couldn't touch Kershaw through all the years. Kelly could never find a way to get a win or even turn in a decent outing against the Dodgers. All of it. Completely reversed well, at least for one night. Well that six pack in the first inning is the is the big reason for that. Had to allow him to just relax and go in there and throw strikes. That's a foul ball. And especially considering the circumstances. The most regrettable outing. Of Clayton Kershaw's great truly great career. Another one two pitch and another foul ball there will be questions after this game as to whether that balky shoulder was bothering him mm. and if that's the case is it possible that he won't appear again in this postseason for the Dodgers and is it then possible that this is the end of his career mm. you'd hate to have that be the case a because he's only 35 but B because it's almost like a wonderful symphony ending on a discordant note. Yeah. A guy that great who's carried himself as well as he has deserves to go out on a grace note. One two pitch again and another foul ball. You know better than I this game at times can be graceless. Yep. Spares no one. Diamondbacks team is hungry. They showed it this season at their best of times and when they went through their worst of times. And they lost 25 of 32 games. Another foul ball extended at bat. Every time we take a look at Gabriel Moreno in the dugout, you can tell he's a chatty sword. He's wound up. <laughs> If you hit a three run home run in the first you wouldn't stop for a week I'm telling you. And that was a blast. <laughs> well here we go again. Bottom of the order in the top of the seventh. Thomas followed by Longoria and Perdomo. There have been 12 pitches in this at bat and 11 foul balls. What did they say the good teams and the good major leaguers don't give up at bats it doesn't matter what the score that's what yeah. Thomas is showing you right here right now. Two and two. What they always said about Pete Rose if he was four for four and the Reds were up by ten. He wanted to be five for five. <laughs> there was no such thing as an at bat that didn't matter. 
Here's a drive to deep right center field, and it was worth the wait for Alec Thomas. He earned that one. Fouled 11 of them off before finding one that was completely to his liking and sending it out of here. Eerily similar to the home run that Corbin Carroll hit. Got some friends in the front row. We saw him before the game saying hello to him. He looked totally relaxed. More relaxed now. Here's Longoria. One for two with a sacrifice fly. Big leg kick. Gets this ball right out in front. That long follow through by Thomas produces a long result. Second home run for him in this postseason. Had one in Milwaukee against the Brewers. First time the scoreboard has changed since the second inning. Six in the first, three in the second. Now one here in the seventh for the Diamondbacks. What did you say in the open? The hundredth postseason game here at Dodger yes. Stadium might be their worst. Hard to think of one that would rival it. 100 postseason games in this ballpark, which opened in 1962 and is the third oldest park still in use in the major leagues, trailing only Fenway and Wrigley. And it's just as beautiful as ever. The vista, especially from our vantage point right behind home plate, looking out toward Chavez Ravine, terrific. Line to center. Outman has a beat on it. The surroundings, however, are small solace for Dodger fans tonight. Here's Lauren. Bob, that 14 pitch at bat, I'm just sitting here thinking about the poise of the Diamondbacks. Very few of them have played in October. I was talking with general manager Mike Hazen. He said, I'm a spaz, but these guys are completely unfazed by the stage. He said, that's the reason I go away. Once the game starts, you won't find me near the players. My energy is manic, and they're so cool. I don't want to mess with their chill vibes, and it's worked on the biggest stages so far. Caught a spike that Michael Grove. They'll do it again, but they'll he'll lose. And it'll be a ball because of the pitch timer, right? Yep. Didn't deliver the pitch on time. Cost him a ball. Nobody on base. Didn't cost him a balk. <laughs> no, that was an interesting shot we had of Alec Thomas oh, there on the bench. Not really saying too much. No yucking it up. Mm. Even in a big score. Just. Very pro. Kelly's still got work to do. He's done a lot already. Two one pitch to Perdomo. Well he struck out his first three times. This time he makes contact but Betts throws him out. Want the latest on the postseason? Just tell Siri. Show me postseason baseball scores. Well, you don't need Siri to know the score here is 10 nothing Diamondbacks. Attendance tonight, 51,653. Most of them not seeing what they expected to see when they came through the turnstiles. <laughs> Called strike three. And Marte and the Diamondbacks are done in the seventh, but the solo homer by Alec Thomas takes them to double digits, up 10 nothing. Designated hitter, J.D. Martinez. 
Merrill Kelly still on the mound as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Well, he's used his full arsenal. Not as many change-ups for outs so far. More cutters. 22 batters he's faced. 15 first pitch strikes. Six ground outs. Eight fly outs. And four Ks. This is his 83rd pitch. And it's ball one to J.D. Martinez, who struck out and grounded out. Martinez is one of those players who's really had to adapt to the new rules. He steps out of the box here. He used to do that with even greater regularity and spend a whole lot of time processing everything. What is this guy likely to do on this count now that that last pitch was a strike instead of the yeah. ball or vice versa. But he's adjusted. Visualization and contemplation. Yeah. Was his game. 3 0 pitch. Inside mm. and he walks him to start the seventh. This postseason, you can get the best 5G coverage in the game with T Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Miguel Castro on the left and Joe Mantiply on the right as Brett Strom, the pitching coach for the Diamondbacks, out to speak to his right hander. When the pitching coach makes the trip, almost always it means the pitcher is going to stay in the game, and this is just to yeah. settle him down or impart some wisdom. I don't think it's to settle him down, considering the lead he has. I think it's just uh, two things. You know, wants to get him right back on the rails. He might have fallen yeah. off the rails with a four-pitch walk, and also give his two relievers a little more time to make sure they're ready. Quite a disparity, <laughs> I'd say. Wow. Go figure. Jason Hayward 0 for 2. And on the flip side, Clayton Kershaw, great against just about everybody, his whole Hall of Fame career, but especially against yeah. the Diamondbacks, couldn't get out of the first. Complete reversal of fortune for both of tonight's starting pitchers. Well, it's one of the reasons this game is so great. You just never know. You know how many games that we've spent too much time in the open talking about what a great pitching matchup this is, and the next thing you know, it's six to four in the second. Just don't know. Or ten to nothing in the seventh. <laughs> there you go. Now, if you're the D-backs, I don't think you want a day off. The day off helps with the pitching, so let's leave that aside. But yeah. just from the standpoint of momentum, if, the, if you're the Dodgers, do you want to get right back at it, or do you want to sit and think about it for another 48 hours or close mm. to it? Hayward strikes out. Well, this setup with the off days is perfect for the Diamondbacks as far as using their two best pitchers, mm -hmm. Kelly and Gallon, as much as they have to if they go five games. For the Dodgers, certainly after you lose a game like this, you want to jump right back out there. But you know what? The Diamondbacks had a big win in that series in Milwaukee. They had a couple days off. They came out ready to play tonight. And now it's the manager who goes to the mound. And pretty sure with Peralta coming up and then Outman, two left-handed hitters, he's going to want Mantiply. Terrific outing for Merrill Kelly. Gorilla sized monkey off his back tonight yes. at Dodger Stadium and his teammates appreciate not only the likely one nothing lead in the series but they're happy for Kelly too. So now the left hander Joe Mantiply in his sixth big league season at age 32. You know Bob there were stretches where this Diamondbacks bullpen struggled but not at the end their last 14 games ERA 
1.68. Opponents average against. Buck 88. Even more importantly, nine and a third scoreless innings in that wild card series against the Milwaukee Brewers as Lovello final words to Kelly after that great outing. Kelly probably telling him I had more left. I could have kept going and Lovello explaining why that might not be the best course of action here. With the two left handed hitters scheduled Peralta and Outman Chris Taylor will bat for Peralta. Kike Hernandez is in the on deck circle to hit for Outman. Taylor's been battling a sore knee of late. As most fans know, a very versatile player has played every position over the last few years for the Dodgers except pitcher, catcher, and first base. Only a couple years back, huge postseason for him. Yeah. Three home run game in the LCS in this ballpark against the Braves in game five of that series. And a game winning homer against the Cardinals in the wild card game. And the winner of this year's Joe Flacco lookalike contest. <laughs> Down he goes. Kelly placidly looking on. Zach Gallen will have the ball for game two on Monday alongside him. Kike Hernandez, after a stint with the Red Sox, returns to the Dodgers. Off the bench to bat for Outman. Martinez walked to start the inning remains at first as Hayward and then Taylor struck out. Remember a couple of years ago Kiki Hernandez rampaged through the postseason for the Red Sox couldn't get him out. Well Dave Roberts was talking about Kike when he was here before thought maybe he should be playing more felt like he was an everyday player then went to Boston. And came back now and appreciates his versatility on this ball club. Is Carapaz, I think, trying to shut a light out. Yeah, it must have been center it. field. Just right in the batter's eye and in Kike's eye. Still sees it and is going to get on the horn. See a lot of kids out there, grown-ups playing with a beach ball or some kind of ball, and you can understand if that goes above the fence how that might be every yeah. once in a while mm -hmm. in the batter's sight line. Problem solved, we hope. Two and out of Kike. As a Dodger back in 2017. Had a three home run game at Wrigley Field yeah. in the LCS against the Cubs, who then were the defending world champions. Dodgers went on to the World Series where they lost in seven to the Astros. He puts a charge into this one. Did he get all of it? No, he didn't off the end of the bat. Maybe just hoping the Dodgers would do something That's tonight. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Winds up in Goriel's glove after seven, still 10 nothing. Two division series games tomorrow on FS1. Rangers with a one nothing lead on the Orioles. Astros with a one nothing lead on the Twins. Off day in both National League series tomorrow. Then it resumes on Monday on TBS. Phillies and Braves with the Phils up by a game. D-backs and Dodgers with the Diamondbacks on their way to a one nothing lead. So the teams with the three best records in baseball. The Braves, the Orioles, 
and by all appearances the Dodgers yes. will have lost game one of their division series. Kike Hernandez in center field. And Chris Taylor in left. You know we talk about experience as Vesia comes into the game. We talk about experience all the time and how that should help you in the postseason Alex Vesia his numbers third three different stints with the Dodgers this year spent a little time in triple A. But now in their third game Carroll Moreno and Thomas have already hit two home runs each. The third postseason mm -hmm. game. So maybe not. Carroll's two for four tonight a single and a homer. Well the pressure will really be on a rookie on the other squad Bobby Miller yeah. in game two against Zach Gallen. Postseason, they shuffle the deck and you start out even. That's right. As long as you get here, it doesn't matter what happened over 162, apparently. The Braves, not only with the best offense in baseball this year, one of the best offenses in the history of baseball, shut out by the Phillies in game one in their home park. The Dodgers, with a plus 207 run differential over 162 games, haven't been able to dent the scoreboard through seven innings against the D backs. Center field. Kike Hernandez immediately has a chance and it's an easy one. Vesio who set a career high in 2022 with almost all his cat different categories has struggled at times this year. He's a guy that pitches with a lot of motion likes to get ready in different ways and the pitcher pitch timer might have played a part in rushing him. Or Tommy feeling Pham. rushed. There was some feeling in the Players Association that maybe they should extend the pitch clock in the postseason with more at stake and pitchers want to gather themselves and think about what's going on. And I think that baseball wisely said uh uh this worked so sure. well during the season we'll stick with it just the way it is. Fifteen seconds no one on base twenty seconds somebody on base one of the greatest rule changes in the history of the game well to do what it's done seven of the eight wild card games since every series was a sweep seven of the eight less than three hours last year in 40 postseason games only four of the 40 were less than three hours and some postseason games were going past four hours even those who love the game we're talking about oh, yeah. October it's not Sunday afternoon when you're watching football we're talking about October got to go to school you got to go to work you want to stay up we haven't it's played tough. it's like going back in time baseball hasn't played these kind of games since 1985 one two pitch to fam down the right field line toward the foul pole Hayward in pursuit lunging into the stands and does he come back with the ball he does not home run Well the first three homers tonight for the D backs were blasted. This one sliced down the right field line over the low wall just inside the foul pole to make it 11 to nothing and it's a four hit night for Tommy Pham. Yeah what a night for Pham. He knew as soon as he hit it that it was going to kind of wrap around that foul pole down the right field line and only Hayward with an unbelievable effort almost comes up with this baseball just out of his reach against that low wall. Watch that reaction from Pham. He knows right away it has a shot here and is making sure it stays fair. Little tap off the bat of Christian Walker. Vesia is on it and throws him out. Another look at a valiant effort. Just out of his reach. Now Gabriel Moreno. 
Long three run homer in the first. Infield single is last at bat ah. overall two for four. The number of games within the division has been reduced this year as they try and balance the schedule a little bit. Reduced from 18 or 19 down to 13 or 14 in yeah. some cases. So the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers met 13 times during the regular season. The Dodgers won eight of them including the last five in a row toward the end of the season. All of which is just bookkeeping because here we are and in game one it's 11 nothing. And the one two pitch. Cut on and missed and that's that but not before the Diamondbacks tack on another run on the solo homer from Tommy Pham to the bottom of the eighth 11 nothing Arizona. Here's a look at tonight's Jeep game summary. To simplify it it's all Diamondbacks. Four home runs off four different pitchers. Moreno hit his off Kershaw. Carroll off Sheehan. Alec Thomas off Michael Grove. And in the last half inning Tommy Pham off Alex Vesia. Colton Wong picked up after Seattle waived him during this season starts it against Miguel Castro. Sinking fastball change up and breaking ball from Castro has got a big arm got two outs in the wild card series didn't allow a hit. 6 7 and a lanky 200. Colton Wong had some good seasons, many of them with the Cardinals, then spent a couple of years in Milwaukee, then on to Seattle. Dodgers picked him up late. Just an opportunity for Dave Roberts to give him an at bat in a lost cause, and he'll stay in. That's a sharply hit ball fielded by Walker, who takes it to the bag himself. Wong will stay in and play second base or somewhere in the middle infield as he just pinch hit for Rojas. Here's Lauren. Bob Mookie coming to the plate. I was waiting outside the press conference room yesterday when Tori Lovello was at the podium and I see Mookie Betts lingering by the door. I'm thinking what is going on. Mookie finally interrupts and says I'm sorry. I just had to give Tori a hug. He raised me. Lovello <laughs> said that's a beautiful human being right there. I wish him luck kind of. I just wish he wasn't in the NL West. <laughs> Well Torrey was a coach under John Farrell with the Red Sox when Mookie was a young player and apparently the two of them forged a lasting relationship. Torrey told us before the game I love him. Huh. Said he always wanted to be not just better but the best he possibly could be. He said some players want to establish themselves as major leaguers. Mookie said. I want to go to the Hall of Fame but he didn't say that in a cocky fashion he said what do I have to do if I'm going to become a Hall of Fame yeah. player whatever that combination of things was he's done it always asked Tori's help and what was the best way to act like a big leaguer on mm -hmm. the field and off the field grounded foul he said Tori telling us this story that as a rookie Mookie was ready to leave he'd showered Ready to walk out the door but he didn't want to be the first guy to leave the clubhouse a young player leaving the clubhouse yeah. before the veterans. Yeah. Can I do this. What do I do. What's the protocol. And Tori said do you have family outside. He said yeah I do. He said we'll, we'll get out of here. <laughs> Go. Three two pitch to Mookie. Outside ball four. The NHL on TNT returns on Wednesday. Coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern Time. You can watch it on TNT or stream it on Max. Now Freddie Freeman. As good as he was 
with the Braves for so many years MVP in the shortened 2020 season part of a World Series winner the next year. He's been even better in his first two seasons as a Dodger. His lifetime batting average leaving Atlanta was 295. He's hit 325 and then 331 as a Dodger and hiked his career average over 300 to 301. This year 29 home runs 59 doubles. No one has had 60 doubles in the major leagues since the 1930s. Todd Helton had 59 one year for the Rockies and Freeman just short at 59 this year. Freddie led the majors in total bases. Had two triples. You wonder if he knew. Maybe he should have pulled up at second base on one of them. It <laughs> happened early in the season. And he'd have 60 doubles. It's one of those major league oddities that I think it's a half dozen or so 60 plus double seasons. Earl Webb holds the record with 67. And they all happened in a 10 year stretch from the late 20s to the mm. late 30s. I have no explanation for that. <laughs> Freeman walks as did Betts. Well Strong the pitching coach will go out after seeing those two walks in 11 nothing game. Cardinal sin for Castro who yeah. led the National League with 75 appearances. Very durable. These meetings when the pitching coach comes out in this circumstance aren't always friendly. Yeah. It's like hey strategically this is not what we want to do but we've been here a while. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Maybe a point to the scoreboard might occur. Will Smith is the hitter. One for three had a single in the first. The Dodgers two best players on the base paths. Betts at second Freeman at third at first make it. Somebody's going to be a third now that ball into the corner. Betts around third heading for the plate Freeman right behind him. Smith sprinting for third. He's got a triple and the Dodgers are on the scoreboard. Well, two base hits for Smith and this game has been the best offensive player for the Dodgers tonight. Remember that long drive to right field that didn't carry out of the ballpark. This one wraps around in such a way that Carroll can't get to it before two run score and Smith with a triple. And now Max Muncy. Strike one to him. Eleven to two. One and one. JD Martinez will be next. Fouled out of play. You know the game is a lost cause when Super Dodger fan Mary Hart has left her seat behind home plate. She's a genuine fan. She's at every game. From the center field camera, you can see her right behind where it says Booking.com. She's right behind the dot in Booking.com every night. There is a shot, but it's foul. She found no entertainment here tonight. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I, I saw what you did there. <laughs> Well these are at bats that you grind out. Why? Because you think over the course of this series you will see Castro again. His one two to Muncie is fouled off. Max Muncie year in year out he's 33 years old now had some big years with Oakland before becoming a Dodger and pretty much if he's healthy you can count on him 
to hit somewhere in the mid 30s in home runs to have a low batting average this year 212 to get a fair number of walks but strike out a whole lot. That's what you get. But he's a good third baseman. And before Freddie Freeman arrived he was a good first baseman yeah, too. He was a versatile player he, when he first came over from Oakland played a lot of second base as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But inherited that third base job once Justin Turner was a free agent and signed with the Red Sox. This half inning began with Colton Wong pinch hitting for Miguel Rojas. My guess is if Mookie Betts stays in the game, he moves from second to short, and Wong plays second base. Yeah. I don't remember Wong ever playing shortstop. Mookie can play either side in the middle of the diamond. The 2 2. Cut on and missed. So that's the second out. I'm going to mention this just because I find it fun. Yeah. That's the fourth time a catcher set a triple for the Dodgers in the postseason. Last time it happened, the fleet footed. A.J. Ellis hit one in 2013. Hmm. OK <laughs> now you got to tell me who are the other two. Did Roy Campanella hit a triple. Uh, I don't, I Did don't Johnny know Roseboro hit a triple. I'll Did Mike to, Piazza hit a triple. I'll have to go deeper into my dive. Hopefully it happens before this game's over. The real baseball junkies out there who are still with us now grabbing the phones and going to baseball <laughs> reference. That's right. Or Elliot Kalb. Maybe. Mr. Stats up in the booth, rolled to short. And that'll do it for the Dodgers in the bottom of the eighth. They score twice on the triple by Smith. And after eight, 11 2, Arizona. The 2023 National League Division Series is presented by Booking.com. Crowd of better than 51,000 has, we can say, thinned considerably <laughs> as we move to the ninth. Caleb Ferguson is the new pitcher, left-hander for the Dodgers. And what Dave Roberts had in mind was a bit more complicated than what I speculated yeah. about. So Colton Wong does in fact play second base. Kike Hernandez comes in from center field to play shortstop. Jason Hayward moves from right to left. Mookie Betts moves from second base to right field. Muncie comes in, fields the bouncer, throws to first. And that's the first out on the top of the ninth as Goriel is retired. Well, Caleb Ferguson only 26 years old and his sixth year. Uh, with the Dodgers see his numbers this year in 68 games one of the important left handers in that bullpen Alec Thomas had a home run his last time up prior to that a couple of walks at a fly out hit nine home runs during the regular season has hit two in the first three games of his postseason one in Milwaukee one here. In there, one and two. One, two. A chance for Wong at second. He backhands it and throws Thomas out. 
you know, Tori Lavella was talking about his team. He said we try to embrace the uncommon, try to win on the margins. Mm -hmm. We can steal bases, group base hits together, but we do have some slug in our game, and they proved it tonight. Yep, with four home runs. Evan Longoria. RBI double, sacrifice fly. Overall, one for three. Happier 38th for him than it's been a 31st for Mookie Betts. Southern California native. Went to Long Beach State. When he got there, they had a kid named Troy Tulowitzki playing short, so he ah. became a third baseman. There's Mookie. Down and in, two and one. Longoria still the career franchise leader for the Rays in home runs, RBIs, doubles, on and on. He really was as you said earlier for quite a while the face of that franchise. Joe Madden as their skipper got them to the World Series in 2008. Something wrong with Ferguson here. Roberts is fearing injury to his pitcher. Catcher Smith ran out there straight away. Now he's asking Ferguson if he's all right. Apparently yes. Dave didn't have any other moves I don't think. Yeah. Kind At least just, none he wanted to make. <laughs> just an awkward follow through, nothing more. One out away from closing out the ninth. The draft in 2006. Slice foul. Longoria was the third overall pick. In that draft, seventh overall pick, Clayton Kershaw. Mm. Inexact science. What a heck of a draft. Bouncing ball, Hernandez had a chance in center, now won it short, and the D backs go in order of the ninth. is brought to you by He Gets Us. Visit HeGetsUs.com to learn more. Evan Longoria made the last out on the top of the ninth, and Torre Lovello gets the veteran off his feet on go. his birthday. For the last half inning, Jace Peterson comes in to play third, and Luis Frias will try and finish it off. Again, speaking to that Diamondbacks bullpen, last 14 games, ERA 1.68. Only one run allowed by Frias in his last 11 and two thirds innings. Thank you. Jason Hayward has had a heck of a season. He's 0 for 3 tonight with two strikeouts, but his OPS got back up over 800. A real uptick from his last couple of years with the Cubs. Mm -hmm. Used almost exclusively against right handed pitching, seldom faces left handers. And as we mentioned earlier, Mookie Betts versatility and willingness to come into the infield on certain nights allows Dave Roberts to get Hayward in the lineup. Yeah it's helped with that uh, rejuvenation of his OPS playing just against righties though he goes down here striking out third time he struck out tonight. Well it isn't just that the Dodgers lost game one it's the way they lost it. Clayton Kershaw with the worst outing of his career. Just as dejected as a, a guy can be in the Dodger dugout earlier tonight. 210 wins only 92 losses. His 2.48 ERA career is the best in the history of the game since 1920. And yet now after this outing his postseason ERA is almost exactly two runs higher. 2.48 in the regular season, 4.49 in the postseason. And a 13 
and 13 record in those 32 starts. Look you're always going to face better competition by definition in the postseason and not everybody can be Sandy Koufax or Bob Gibson even if they're headed for the Hall of Fame but that's almost inexplicable that difference yeah. is almost impossible to explain. Chris Taylor rolls one to short the short handed Perdomo throws him out. Back in 2013 and 14 both Cy Young seasons for Kershaw the Cardinals got him twice in the postseason both years 0 and 4 and in 2018 in the World Series against the Red Sox Boston beat him twice yeah. so that accounts for six of those 13 defeats. It's just uh, it's it's hard to even think about because he's been around so long and been so great for so long that maybe this might be the last time we see him on a Dodger Stadium mound. Little squibber to the right side gloved by Walker he shovels it over to Frias who works a very tidy bottom of the ninth and that is that as Kike Hernandez is the last out. Well we didn't come in under three hours but with all the runs that were scored three hours and four minutes. Pokes on Park Avenue will take it. This has been very successful. The new rules especially the pitch clock. If you're the Dodgers you're going to speak that speak that it's just one game rebound on Monday. If you're the Diamondbacks you're going to feel awfully good about what your club has done in this first three postseason yeah. games. But for the Dodgers it's not just one game. Yeah. There's the Kershaw situation. There's the fact that now it's a best of five not a best of seven you got to win three of the next four you got a rookie going against Zach Gallen in game two and then there's the whole history of great regular seasons and postseason disappointment that like the Braves of Bobby Cox and even the Braves who have won six straight division titles now and only won one World Series in that space of time. You know it's a whole different ball game now no pun intended yeah. when you talk about the baseball postseason it has so many layers it's just a different deal. They're going to have to try to regroup though to not let what happened what happened to them last year from the Padres. Tough hill to climb for the Dodgers. Certainly stirs bad memories. Let's go downstairs to Lauren Shahadi. Hey, Tommy fam, congratulations. A four hit night. I saw you watching that one in the eighth. When did you know it was out? I really didn't. You know, I was hoping <laughs> he, didn't either. That he didn't catch it because, you know, Jay Hay has robbed me a couple times. I'm just happy he didn't do it that time. I talked to your general manager, Tommy, yesterday. He said he's never met a player care so much. I know that matters to you. What's your reaction to it? Yep. Uh, speechless, man. That's, that's high praise. Yeah. So. Um, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing and keep doing what I'm doing. You've been in the postseason a time or two. Most of this okay. team, Tommy, hasn't. How the heck are they so calm under pressure? You know, I, I got, I told you, I got my little jokes to keep them humble. So. What did you tell Corbin? Um, you know, when I was, when I, ten years ago, I was faster than him. <laughs> what do you say? He he doesn't believe me, but you know, we got Strom here to kind of, you know make me look good and say yeah he was faster than you so then you know a lot of times these fly balls that they catch everything but when they don't you know I kind of make jokes again like hey you know 10 years ago I would have caught that so I love them man they're, they're all young and they're all good bright futures ahead of them you got to let him know congratulations Tommy thank you Bob all right Lauren that puts a bow around it for Tommy Pham and the D backs who win tonight 11 to 2 in game one. This best of five NLDS resumes on Monday night with game two right here on TBS coverage begins. It says here at five Eastern but I don't think that's the case. Maybe the Phillies and Braves but not us you know you'll figure it out. <laughs> Coming up next the closer with Ernie Johnson Curtis Granderson Jimmy Rollins and Pedro Martinez for Ron Darley Lauren Shahadi Bob Costas so long from Dodger Stadium see you Monday.